Good morning people. Today we are going to be repairing this Fiat key fob. Now this is from a Fiat Panda. I do believe the Fiat 500 also used the same key and I do think that some Citroens and some Vauxhalls also use this key. Now I'm trying to keep this as original as possible because all of this key works perfectly fine. The blade is fine and the remote locking is fine. The main reason that I am changing it is due to the general condition but mainly because of the buttons. You see on there they've actually just worn off of this one so hopefully I'm going to change that because this is quite annoying for me. Now the kit I did get is this one. I did purchase this from Amazon and it was for the price of £12.99p and you do get a full kit if you were also going to change the blade. As I said, I don't actually need to, but you get your new bushings in there. You get a brand new blank key fob, obviously with a blank key. And what is nice, you get all the tools to um, actually change it. Hopefully I'm not going to need to do that. Hopefully I can literally just change the casing. So that being said, let's just get on with the video. To repair this key, I am only going to be using the tools that come in this kit. So this way it shows that you should be able to do this at home. Right, so to start off, to take out the battery, you see in here, you see that flat head? All you're going to do is turn that quarter of a turn up here like so. Just put your screwdriver just behind that and then the battery will actually pop out. It's actually pretty easy. So look, you just pull this door out and then slide it out. There is your battery. If you ever do want to change it, you'll just pop this out. So now our battery is now out of the key. And the good news is with this bit, this literally pops off. So we're just gonna run our fingers around it, hopefully without breaking it. And then the front cover comes off. This is also the same with the back. So we're just gonna flip it round, get a good grab of it and try and pull it off. This one is a little bit harder. It's coming, it's coming. So there we go. That is now the back casing off. So once you get the first part of the case off, we're just gonna turn it round and we're gonna undo this Phillips head screw in the back. I know this is a flathead, but it does actually work. So just gonna loosen that out and then put the screw to one side so you don't lose it. There is a new one in the back of, in the, back of the new one, so it doesn't really match if you lose it. But right, I have popped these ones out, but on the side, we have got one, two, three, four access flaps. So you see there's, it, all it is, is kind of like it sits in like a recess and all you need to do is prise it out of the, each one. So like, look, if I pop this in there, there's one. I did already do that one. There's two, there's three, and there's four. And then once you do that, the top case will then slowly come apart. You just gotta be careful inside there because there is a spring. But then this does pull apart. So then there we go. The key is now apart. Now that is like your remote central locking on that. So just be careful of that. But inside here, there is a spring and there is bushing and all that. So you just got to be careful. You don't really want to lose anything or damage anything or drop anything in there. So just make sure you're being careful when you're doing this. So I think the easiest way to be able to remove this is you're going to push down in the middle. So in this case, it's the Fiat logo. So if we push down on that, this will then pop up. That is the remote mechanism. So you press that button, that is what pops the key up, but there is a spring in there. So you have to be careful. But it looks like if I press that button, we can then spin. See that, like we've spin that out the way and then we can slowly lift up the blade. I said, there's the spring. Be careful you don't damage or lose the spring. But now the key is actually apart, which is pretty good. And I believe the motherboard or chipboard, whatever you want to call it, is also release. So look at that, look. We just lift that up and it is all out, which means we are then good to hopefully put this into our new unit. The good thing about having this new blank key is that you can actually practice taking it apart. All right, there isn't going to be a motherboard in it and the key isn't, you know, cut out, but everything else is the same. So then you can practice on this one. And if you don't feel like you're confident or you're up to changing it, then obviously you can get it done elsewhere. But then it does allow you to then practice. But there we go, that is everything out. So as I said, just be careful. You have the spring inside here and then inside the button, there is another spring. I will show you that when we are putting it back together. But what I'm going to do, because the key is apart, I am going to be taking the Fiat logo one. You know, they are pretty much, they look the same, so hopefully they fit the same, but this one hasn't got the Fiat badge on it. Although maybe I can just pop this off. This Fiat logo is actually only held on by these metal tabs on the back. Again, sorry if it's quite difficult to see. But then all I'm going to do 
is get a screwdriver, prise that underneath, so then the back comes up. I'm going to do this on all three sides, and then that Fiat logo should come off. If you are going to do that, just be careful. You know, we want to hold these in the same position and mark where the top is because obviously you don't want to put the logo on upside down. You want to have it in the same place. So when you do it, make sure that they are in the same place like this and then mark where the top is with an arrow. Well, I've scratched one on this one, but you understand what I mean? So let me just pop this off. We then have it off and look, there you go. There's these little arms that you have to move. But then what's good, because I already marked it with the arrow here, I know that the Fiat logo should face upwards in, where is it, in this position. I've just got to try and work my way around it. Here we go. Push it all the way back and now fold these arms back in. So what we want to do now is remove the old board from the old case, put that to one side, and then pop it onto your new case. Now this does sit slightly higher because it is raised where it touches the battery connects at the back. That's not, not really a problem because when you pack the key and screw it together, it will push it down. So that's not really a problem. So now we are going to put the spring. So here's your spring and you want the spring that's got the arms on it. See the little arms on it? You're then going to put that inside this side, not this side because that is where that arm will click to. See those two holes on there? That's where that arm goes. So we want the spring in on this side. Now to put this key together is going to be a bit awkward because you're going to have to constantly do this cack handed. So, where is the piece I need? You see this on this spring here, you see this arm, the arm that sticks up here. You need to get that inside this little nook on there. You see there's a little outline in there? Again, hard to focus. And you need to twist that into it because if you leave it just normal, when you press the button, nothing happens. But due to the spring being twisted, that is what will then fire the key up. And you have to be careful that you don't drop the key. So I have now done this on the key that I am rebuilding. I do apologize because I had to bring it close to my face and where the camera's in the way, it's hard to do. But I can show you with the old key. So again, the arm goes in like this. And right, just from trial and error, you have to remove the button. So listen to what I'm saying. Do not put the button in yet, yeah? Leave this button out. Right, so with the spring, same rules apply. You see the little notch? If I put the notch in like this, and just hold it so. Look, the spring is holding the key, but the key isn't doing anything. So what we need to do is twist it as we insert it. So basically, we're gonna put that back in again correctly. We're then going to hold the spring in place and twist this around whilst holding it. So that's why I said it's quite cat candid and it's quite difficult to do away from your face. So right, the key is now loaded, right? Now you can now put your button in. So we would then push this button in, you know, as you saw, put it in at an angle and then hook it over. But the reason you do that is because this might fire, because then when you press the button, look, the key comes up on its own. That's not me doing that, look. That's the spring. So that is why you need to be careful when doing the spring. So make sure that you put this in first, do a full 360 degree turn, push it back and then put this bit in correctly. And as I said, I did do my one off camera, but the same rules apply. So back to my new key. I have now twisted this around 360, so the spring key now flicks back, and I have now locked the arm into it. But you see the button, nothing's happening with the button. So why is that? It's because we need to put the spring in it. So we're going to grab this spring. It kind of looks like the spring that you have in like a ballpoint pen, you know, once you click, all we're going to do is push that in there. What happens is this side of the key then presses against it, henceforth giving you your button mechanism. Now, as I said, this is all a bit cat candid and you have to always have something to hold it with. But with the motherboard, it's actually easier putting it in this side first. So this is from trial and error, because now I know that that is actually lined up correctly. So to do this, grab the other side of your key and line it up correctly. Remember, you must hold the spring in your other hand. And then push this together, you hear it click? Push this side together, hear it click? And I think that we are there. So look, now the button works because of this side of the key presses against, presses, sorry, against the spring. So now this key should work 
correctly, which it does. The only thing I don't like is that this is actually a rubber surround. And as I said, where I put this Fiat logo on it, it's made it a tiny bit thicker. So it's actually kind of pushing out the rubber seal. Hopefully when I put this side of the key on, it uh, should help it. But right, on to the next bit. So the next thing I'm going to do is attach the key ring attachment. Now you could have done this in the stage before. All it does is slide in in here, but where you need to hold the key and the spring and the mechanism and all that, I find that a bit difficult. So once you've closed all of this, you're still gonna hold the key together, but you're just gonna loosen the three bottom flaps here. And by doing that, it will give you enough clearance just to push this in. Look, you see in that little recess there, one half of it goes in there, and then the other half goes in there. So all that holds that in is the key being clipped together. So once you've done that, make sure all your doors on here are all closed correctly. And then in the back here, don't forget to put your screw in. It's only a small little screw, isn't it? So we're just gonna put that in there and we're going to tighten it up. So once we've tightened up that screw on the back, we are pretty much nearly to rock and roll. So the next bit would be to actually put your battery back. And as I said, to change the battery, all you do is just pull that out and put your next one in. It's a nice and easy design. And again, come in at an angle. It's just like a little access door. Make sure it's flush at the bottom and push it closed. This only turns half a turn. So she's nice and easy. Push it in and then turn your half a turn. And there we go. Oh. I mean, I'll try not to break the key before I've actually finished the video. But then once we've done that, we can then reattach the new casing to the back. So slide that in. This bit's nice and easy because it all just clips in together in there. So this is like a shell for the casing kind of thing, which is pretty good because then it keeps it all neat. So I do hope that it does keep this rubber seal on here all in place because I don't like how tight it is to it. You don't have to put that Fiat logo on there. You can probably get a sticker or you just leave it as a silver piece, but I wanted the Fiat logo on there. Then we push all of this together. And there we go. We now have our Fiat key and it's all nice and clean and nice and new. And does the button work correctly? Of course it does. So the good news is our Amazon 13 pound key kit actually works very well and it fits very nicely. But what I do quite like about the Fiat key is that you see the casing around it, like this bit, my one was all scratched up, although I did actually change it due to these buttons. But this is all scratched up, but you can actually change these within about 15 seconds. As you saw, you just pull them off. So if you wanted to, you could spend, you know, 13 pound and literally just change the surround on it and you would have a brand new looking key whenever you want it very easily as well. So actually I think that's pretty good. So this is a nice little DIY job that you can do at home, albeit it is a little bit fiddly. So if you're not the best of small little fiddly stuff, maybe I wouldn't recommend it. But apart from that, it's a pretty easy job and yeah, I think you could do this at home. So hopefully you enjoyed the video and found it useful and thanks for watching.